Hey guys, so now we're moving on to uh, this GLA 45 coming in for our stage two tune. It's gonna be getting its uh, gearbox dual clutch tune and also its engine tune. Uh, the upgraded modifications that this has is an upgraded k and air intake filter and also a, an upgraded downpipe. So basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be getting a baseline run uh, with the hardware, no tune on the gearbox, no tune on the engine. Um, and then once we're done, we're gonna read the gearbox out, read the engine out. We're gonna tune it, and um, hopefully we'll also get some live tune tuning enabled on the uh, on the ECU today. So I'm gonna try and patch the ECU to, to be able to do that as well. So that means we'll be able to actually calibrate the ECU while the car's running, um, which will probably be a first for um, Perth, uh, Western Australia, on this particular platform. It might even be a first in Australia, I don't know. Uh, but either way, it's very exciting, and um, I really hope that's something we can do today. But either or, um, we're just gonna basically be calibrating up to a point where the car is safe, it's running the AFRs, the boost, timing, all those sorts of things within safe thresholds and obviously putting out a nice figure. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. Might just turn around to 180 I ain't politic and I ain't kissing no baby the devil on my doorstep being so shady mm, Don't trip, we don't gotta let him in Don't trip, hey, yeah I let it go but I never go with it uh -huh. Yeah, okay, cool this fall weather Fuck the bullshit, I'm here to make it all better With a little music for you I don't do enough for you without you so basically what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be plugging in our ECU bench harness into the ECU which is located right here. Um, and this other side goes into our B flash tool. With this we're basically going to be able to do a full read of what's on the ECU, all of its contents, um, as opposed to an OBD read which is in the car. OBD read only gets the calibration area, the calibration area is all your tuning maps. But everything inside the ECU, like a full read, allows me to actually do a patch which enables live tuning. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be enabling that patch um, by plugging in the harness, getting a full read, patching it, writing the full write, um, and then yeah, we'll be able to do basically full live tuning through the OBD port. Yeah. See. <laughs> so basically, what we're doing now is um, we're getting the baseline data log, and in this data log, we're just seeing some basic parameters to to get to to begin with. Sorry, um, such as the air to fuel ratios, any knock registration. Um, the like the power and torque requested from the ECU, wastegate position, boost pressure, all that sort of stuff, and um, we're just going to correlate with that with the dyno graph and um, make sure everything's running as it should um, in standard form. Obviously, we do this because the last thing we want to do is go ahead and tune a car when it isn't running right in standard form. So you know we have to do our pre-tune diagnostic pre-tune. Data logging session, we just want to make sure it's at a level which is obviously, like I said, safe to be optimised, so that's what this is all for. But once that's read, um, I'll basically, yeah, I'll take it over there, tune it and bring yeah. it back here. With the facelift gearboxes, they have a different uh, map address for the race start um, engine speed set point. So I know the factory is like 4,000 RPM. Yep. Um, there's been cases where I can't find it. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to find it today for the race start. Sometimes yep. I, I don't know where it is. Yep. Um, I just, yeah, there's no clear indication. I think with the, some of the facelift models in the, the DCT, they changed the like, race start logic or maybe just the way that it references the maximum engine speed during race start. Yep. Um, so I might not be able to find it, but yeah. we'll see. I don't yep. know yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's right. We'll, we'll have a look. Yeah. Not the end of the world. No. <laughs> no. But like I say, like, like race start's not something, it's, it's a novelty thing and I've done it. Oh so yeah. 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 Well, we lowered it quite significantly, but then the thing is, is it had um, a lot of like bogging down. Oh, okay. Like we tried Equinata Motorplex where we lowered the yep. race start and then we tried to basically oh, reduce wheel slip. It did do that, yep. but the thing is, is it didn't generate enough power to overcome the force of having to move the drivetrain. Yeah, right. So yep. it bogged down. It wouldn't make enough torque to get it actually even off the line. So yep. there's like a, and because obviously you're playing with power in the tune and then you're trying to figure out the race start set point. Yep. It's like this harmony balance of where can I make the most amount of torque and lay it down correctly depending yep. on engine speed. So. Yep. 
it's, yeah, we gotta, you got to find all that stuff out, and it's just by playing with it, really. First gear will be, yeah, they'll have this sort of profile, rather. There yep. you go. So maximum torque is going to be 600 newton meters. Yep. Um, whereas before it would have been 400, and then increasingly all, all the way yep. up to, to 500. Yep. But 600 newton meters is where I'm going to set it at. Yep, cool. Cool. So um, there we go. Okay. TCU tune GLA 45. Cool. Now that's done. Control of boost pressure and other things yep. like that will change the axes. Because what will happen currently, if I don't have this axis modified, it'll extrapolate past this point of load, which might be, let's say, 1.8 bar, because that's all the factory is designed to go up to. Yep. So what I might do, I might set that load value up to 100, no, 240, and then 230, and then 220, and then maybe 200. Yep. And then that way now, you've got, see how you, you remember how they were all tight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, because yeah. there's a finer resolution um there which gives you a lot of control in that area which is where it was operating majority before but now because we're obviously operating over the that part i've extrapolated the axes out to where we're expected to operate now yep. and then obviously like i said interpolated the values um so that there's a smooth on ramp of boost pressure we yep. have a maximum target boost pressure of 32 psi at uh what looks like to be 4000 rpm yep cool. okay and then it will yep dip back down again so yep. that that's only in sport mode so you have an overboost function in this ECU I usually don't enable that because I don't want there to be like spikes in torque yep, over yep, what the yep. dyno reads and obviously there will be like a something called an overboost cooldown which is whereby the ECU allowed to overboost but then it gives you 20 seconds of cooldown before allowing you to overboost again, again or yeah, over yeah, talk yeah, again yeah, yeah. so um, it's generally what I do is I set the overboost to just like let's say 100% and then I just the time at a zero so there's no it just doesn't engage yep, yep. Um, and then yeah I'll give you different uh, profiles of torque depending on driving mode so yep. for sport mode you'll have maybe something for instance, maximum permissible um, torque curve will be like this. So you'll be able to make maximum torque after 200, no, sorry, 2750 RPM. Yep. And then for comfort, what I might do in all the other driving modes is, is bring it down a little bit. But I'll custom tune that when we're doing that now. Yep. I just sort of give it like an unrestricted thing and I make them all the same for now yep. so that when we're on there, I can actually get it fine tuned. Yep. Yeah. Give off tunes in, the engine tune base is in. Yep. So now Danny and I will go ahead and live tune. Yeah, live tune it basically. Yep. Take some logs, do whatever. Yep. Awesome. All right. Cool. My shit, say my head got big. Yeah, well, this man world he made me crazy. Might just turn around to 180. I ain't politic and I ain't kissing no baby. The devil on my doorstep being so shady. Mm -hmm. Don't trip. We don't gotta let him in. Don't trip. Hey, yeah. I let it go, but I never go with it. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we've, we've finished up tuning uh, this GLA 45. Like I said, it's probably the first live tuned on the OEM ECU in um, Perth, Western Australia, and maybe even Australia. Um, we did some pretty good work on it today. It took us about an hour. Um, most the, the probably the hardest thing with this car is the boost control. So the wastegate duty cycle pre control uh, that was the thing that obviously I had the most difficulty working with today. The air to fuel ratios, everything's fine. Fuel pressure's fine. Um, we had to pull about three to six degrees out of timing out of what I usually would put into a stage two um, because it just didn't like it. It was it was pulling timing, so I had to pull that out. Um, yeah, like I said, NFU ratio is great. We've got about 0.82 to 0.85 lambda um, during wide open throttle and um, boost pressure set at about two bar. Okay, now moving on to the graph, we've got an increase of torque from 443 newton meters. Um, peak to a 583 newton meters, which is ridiculous. And that's obviously assisted with the gearbox tune. Without the gearbox tune, we wouldn't be able to get a figure like that, um, especially that much of a difference. Um, now, obviously, secondly, we've got the, the power figure. Now, this uh, our particular client here with the GLA 45 hasn't got the uh, air restrictor removed in the air intake. So once we get that moved out, we'll probably get an additional 20 to 30 horsepower as well. So we've got an increase of, of horsepower, about 30 horsepower, but you know, quite a lot of torque, which is great for the stage two. But yeah, the air filter, it starts um, 
restricting up top. You'll notice the little dips there, that's because of the drivetrain, um, the difference in torque split between the rear and front wheels. We've actually overlaid the front and torque, uh, front and rear torque um, plots and they basically start dancing around each other here so that's why it's got that there um, but obviously yeah we've we've controlled it the best we could and then it just the drivetrains just spat out there so that's just okay we'll just have to deal with that but yeah overall I'm pretty happy with this um, it's safe it's pulling a maximum of one and a half degrees of ignition timing and that's under like quite heavy conditions that's me like us gunning it on the dyno um, that's quite high intake air temperatures now the safety threshold is generally within three degrees so one and a half degrees is perfectly fine for a tuned car at its that it's absolute push um yeah so yeah that's basically it today uh thanks for watching guys and i hope you enjoy this uh, episode see you later see you. all right